Hi everybody, uh, this is Casey Wallace and I am back with you with another episode of COVID-19, The Opportunity She Didn't Think Of. And today's guest is Sarah Landon and Sarah is a fellow practitioner and actually fellow channeler um, and trans channels an extraordinary group known as the Council. Um, she of course, like so many of us in the industry, we all work diligently in our craft to assist humanity to shift into higher conscious perspectives to eliminate all of the fear and stress and anxiety and anything that's holding you back in your life. All the answers, of course, are in your higher consciousness state. And she is a master at assisting people into that field. And her work is transformational. And I am very blessed and honored to know her and to be able to have these types of conversations with her as you are as well. So sit back and relax and enjoy the transmission that Sarah's gonna bring forth to you in her wisdom and in her way. And we're gonna be chatting about, as you know, the extraordinary time that we're sitting in right now and what most of us may not be recognizing fully about all of the variables about what you could be focusing on and really what you could be doing with those energies as we come out of this situation and we're going to are we going to be truly expanded and transformed or are we going to be deeper and deeper into fear of course we know it's going to be the first choice for anybody who's watching this show so Sarah, it's such a pleasure to have you here with us today. Thanks so much for being with us. Thank, thank you, Casey, and thank you, Brad. It is absolutely my honor and my pleasure and my joy to be here with all of you and to have this conversation. I think it's so important. And the point you made about how are we collectively going to emerge from this, but how are you going to emerge from this? This is an opportunity to transcend fear in your own life experience, this is an opportunity to transcend worry and anxiety and to absolutely know that there is energy available to you that is guiding you here to navigate these times with ease and grace. And it is, I believe, the greatest opportunity for the transformation of human consciousness we've ever seen. But it begins with you. It really begins within you. And that transformation occurs within your own being. And then you begin to see it in the world around you. It can work no other way. Uh, yeah, I, we've, had, we've had some great conversations. And I want to say, as I'm going to let you um, take the stage and do your thing, that as we've been hearing that these energies and this time is so opportunistic for people in their transformation, and that is the truth. Um, some of you may be thinking to yourselves, oh my gosh, but I haven't really been doing a lot of work. I'm gonna miss the train. I, I don't know what to do. This is too big for me. And I wanna say really quickly right now, please don't think that. Just come on board, just come on board. Wherever you are, start to step on the train. We're going to slow that train down. We're going to let you get on and you're going to make your shifts. For those of you who've been on your journey for quite a long time, we already know that you're feeling the acceleration, but we don't want this to be uh, an overwhelming subject for anybody. If you're listening, we're going to we're going to help nurture you and support you and get you going so that you can experience this extraordinary transformation. I just wanted to say that really quickly because I think sometimes we, we forget that there's people out there who think they may not be ready for all of this. And, and I say, yes, you're, you're ready. You're ready. You can do this. Do you agree with that? Oh, absolutely. You're not only ready. This is what you have been preparing for your entire lifetime and probably many, many more. This is the time. This is the lifetime that you chose to fully awaken and to live as a realized master in this time of the great awakening imagine your own awakening everybody who's listening to this has gone through their own awakening experience i think so long as we're in the physical form we are continuing this awakening journey at new levels with new levels of awareness it, it, it's a journey really for all of us even though we may think oh we've reached a certain level of awakening or we have a long way to go it's not about any of that it's about the journey imagine you're going on a hike 
through the beautiful mountains and the wildflowers. It's about the journey. It's not about getting somewhere with all of this, but it is about navigating your own life experience with much greater ease, grace, peace, all of the things that are available to us. Um, we were talking before we started the interview, Casey, that everybody has access to this expanded level of awareness, this infinite intelligence that is always available to you, this light that is guiding the way for you at all times. It is about awakening to that. It's not about being perfect. It's about practicing these things that elevate your consciousness and your vibration to a place where you really can live in an experience of heaven on earth, no matter what is going on around you. And this might be even a better time than ever before to experience your own creation of heaven on earth in your life. So wherever you are on the awakening process and the awakening journey, it's perfect. This is what you've been preparing for. And imagine your own awakening experience times 10 happening on a global level. You are needed more than ever before. You are so important. Every single one of you that are listening to this, your ability to radiate your light and live at a level of consciousness at this time when people in your life that you never would have imagined are going to start awakening at an unprecedented rate. And this is why you are here, to radiate your light, to hold a higher level of consciousness, to illuminate the potential and the possibilities for everyone around you during this time. And as we move forward in creating new paradigms of human existence that will emerge from this time. The very, the very first thing I love that you said that I want to use as a constant reminder, and I, I'm going to steal that from you, Sarah, is we chose this life. We chose this time. for. We chose this transformation. This isn't haphazard. This isn't a mistake. This isn't... Uh, uh, something that's happening to us. It's what's happening for us, you know, in our creative aspect. And like you said, every single person on the planet right now chose this. And so they've chosen this transformational life for themselves. Just that is very empowering for everybody. And I know your work is all about everybody's power everybody owning their power and unleashing their power for themselves. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And you're not stealing it from me. I believe this is just all of us remembering what we already know, what we came here knowing. We knew that this was the time. We begged to come here and be on the planet during this time of the Great Awakening. That's how incredible this is. And the council says, you are needed now more than ever it's so important this is the time this is what you've been prepared for and they added to that that what they mean is you're not needed up in higher dimensions you're not needed anywhere else than right here right now because this is the best thing going on anywhere and it's so important to stay in this experience to be in a body because that is the way consciousness and light and new potentials come through into human consciousness is by us being in human form and part of seeding human consciousness with, with what is possible and the potentials that are here for us. It's also important to remember that not everybody is going to awaken through a spiritual path like most of us have taken. Many of us had a spiritual path all of our paths were unique and different. However long it took or however quick it was is perfect. And there is, there are many other ways that people are going to awaken. For example, it, technology, science, uh, mind altering things that become more and more common like psilocybin and those types of things. 
some people might call that a spiritual experience, but technology, uh, innovation, science, but anything that you love has the potential to serve in your awakening. Many people will awaken because of their absolute love for the planet. Many people will awaken because of the love for the oceans or for animals, and it will be the love that awakens them. So anything that someone focuses on, uh, that they're, they're really drawn to, has the potential to serve in their own awakening experience. I kind of say this half-heartedly, but the council said, you know, think of all the men in the world whose awakening came from that woman that they fell absolutely in love with. And that was what led to their own awakening experience. Now that might've been a, a spiritual one on some point, but so what are we awakening to? <laughs> you know, it's like, what, what are we awakening to? Your human is awakening to what the master within you has always known, which is there is one source and we are all part of that source. Everything is of that source. Source, God, all that is, the divine, whatever you want to call it. There is some greater intelligence here. We're awakening to that. We're more than these bodies. We're awakening to that. The answers, the solutions, the innovations to our problems, our challenges, our issues on this planet are going to come from a higher dimension of consciousness. Not from the level of which the problem and the issues and the challenges lie. The answer to every issue we have on the planet is consciousness. Whether it's poverty or abuse or animal welfare, the answer to all of these things is as people elevate their consciousness and awaken to a higher potential, higher possibilities, a, their own personal power, uh, from that state, you just live far more consciously. It's even, I'll give, it's the silliest little example. I love animals. I love nature. I love the whole, uh, the, the land, the whole thing. I was walking one day and one of the core things that the council says is follow the energy, follow the light, you know, live in the moment, fully being in the moment, be conscious. And sometimes that means slowing down. So I'm kind of walking around my yard doing some things. And all of a sudden, I just, in this moment, I, I got this wave of peace that came over me and I just really slowed down and I went to take one more step and I looked and then there was the most beautiful snail right under my foot that I almost crunched. But that is a perfect, very simple example of being conscious, living in the moment, letting energy guide the way that you do no harm because you're guided around things. You, there is this intelligence that will help you navigate this time. Uh, but we cannot give what doesn't exist within us. So whatever is going on within your own being is what you are contributing to the planet. It's what you're contributing to human consciousness. It's what you're contributing in the experience of everybody that you love. So if you want peace, at this time for the people that you love the most, but within you, you're in total chaos and fear and disharmony, you are just contributing to that. So our tendency is to wanna to fix it for everybody else, uh, to heal them, to fix them, to make it better. And most certainly we are here with this deep desire to serve as I believe uh, divine stewards of love, uh, for humanity and this planet, but you cannot be helping, fixing, contributing anything other than what you are. As you get into higher dimensions of consciousness and awareness, we don't get what we want or what we focus on and try to manifest. You get more of who you are, who you are being, what you're allowing. And the truth of who all of us are is infinite love, pure bliss, uh, a heavenly peace, and 
beacon of light in this world. And when you find that within you, especially because this time is giving every one of us the space to really look at our lives, our actions, our choices, our behaviors, our everyday day to day, what we thought was important, uh, the environments that we live in, the environments within us, and deciding whether that needs to transform. And it's an incredible opportunity. Also, I think um, it's, it's revealment too for people. We, Julius always says, you know, in tough times is when you really see yourself. Oh, your, yeah. Either your reaction or your response to something very, very challenging is really going to showcase who you are. Um, and so, th like, so this is revealment too. Like you said, you know, it's it's a time for people to discover authentically who they are, so that they can navigate the expansions that they're choosing. Not to beat themselves up, not to continue to judge themselves, but to say, hmm, well, this is interesting that this came up. Guess I'll master work on that, you know, a little bit more intently, you know, and master that at this time. Um, it is so important too, like you were saying, that this opportunity of downtime, you know, for care, you know, for the earth ship's care, for our body's care. I remember I tell, I tell everybody this story. For anybody who's listening to this transmission who has never traveled outside of their country, you ever want to be appreciative of your country, travel outside of your country. Okay, and then we did that a few years ago, traveled to another country, I won't mention it in specifics, but it was a third world country, and it was, it was very joyous for us to take the trip. We were there um, with somebody that we love very dearly, but just to see the difference in day in and day out things, and what you have and what you don't have. I came back from that trip basically kind of ashamed at some of all the over stuff that I have that's unnecessary. We did a lot of literally cleaning of the closets, cleaning out of the cupboards, but it was a total reset of interpretation of appreciation for our lives, appreciation for the things that we have. And I think this is a global reset for people mm -hmm. on, that, on that note too, like you said, what am I going to do? What am I able now to recognize that are my priorities, my values, my loves? And let's amplify that and expand all of that and share and inspire everybody in that direction. Yeah, I'm, I'm so glad you said that. It, my first experience of going overseas was so incredibly humbling. So humbling. And I think one of the things that I have really looked at in this experience, it, where I'm at, we're about two weeks into staying at home, and I realize how much I consume all day long because I'm so busy and externally focused and going here and going there. Little things like uh, how much plastic I use how much less I use when I'm not so busy out there all the time. It, it's just those simple things that I go, wow, I didn't realize. I thought I was living really consciously and I just didn't even realize how unconscious I was in some of my day-to-day -day things until I really had this time where I think I've been out of uh, my home uh, to go to the store one time in two weeks. You know, this is not about staying at home. This is about, uh, or staying in, this is about really going within. And here's an important piece, without any judgment, because when you know better, you do better. The more conscious you become, the more aware you become, your choices change, your environment changes, you change. And yet there is no judgment from the other side ever about what you 
choices you made in the past. When you know better, you do better. And there is not. Uh, one of the other questions I've gotten a couple of times are these questions about conspiracy theories. And if the council says, do not give your attention to lower agendas. Don't get sucked in. If you are on this bandwagon or belief system that all these people are trying to harm you, that people are trying to do harm and they're trying to harm you and you're getting really tied up and that feels awful, makes you feel very powerless, uh, gets you very entangled with judgment and chaos and trauma and drama. And you will think that it is others that are harming you or trying to harm you, but it is you that is harming you in those moments. So the judgment here, you know, imagine everybody's on an airplane flying over the ocean and all of a sudden the plane's about to go down. You're just going to figure out how to solve this and come together and work together and share whatever you know that might be helpful and and it's not going to be uh, about blaming anyone and that's not what this is about either. It's not about judgment of anybody out there and it's not about judging yourself as you come into greater levels of realization at this time. I know Julius talks a lot in your work about the master and the council is so with a sense of urgency, not because there is a lack of time, but because it really is important for all of us. And if you're listening to this, you are a master. If you are drawn to, to our work, you are a master. And this is the lifetime that you chose to fully self-realize yourself as the master that you are and live as a master. It's time to step forward. And the master is one that navigates life with ease and grace. The master is one that is free to choose the life you live for you, regardless of what's going on out there. The master is here to illuminate the potentials for humankind. It, it, it is a very different way of being. It's a very different journey, the journey of the master than the journey of the human. And one of the most important things is that you know your human is always trying to do 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 all this stuff in the doing there is always more to be done in the being all things are done through you and there is a light and an energy that guides you and you live in that flow of fully allowing all that you are and you let that energy guide you all throughout the day it's a very different way of being and I believe this sacred time has been divinely orchestrated for you to take these, this wisdom, which is your wisdom, or you wouldn't be hearing it, and really put it in practice in your life so that you really begin to realize the master that you are. Thank you for that, Sarah. They're, your words are are they're intoxicating. Actually, for me, I'm just like, mm -hmm, just bring it in, just bring it in. Um, I love also, you know, I the the calm and the peace versus the panic and the fear. Of course, we all agree. You and I both agree. We are creating our worlds through our perspective. And so the energy field that we are creating for ourselves will create the reality for us. It will create a calm reality, an expansive reality, an opportunistic approach. When we are feeling those emotions, it's calm, it's cool, I am creating this, I am well, I am safe, and everything's gonna end up being reflected for that. Unfortunately, of course, the other direction is the same way. People who are in that stress and that fear and their panic and they're convinced uh, that certain things are going to take place and of course they do because they're always right. We're always right, right? We're manifesting our realities, you know, for ourselves. Are there things, I know, um, you know, for my own practices just to keep my body resilient for my channeling is, is a natural process for my own self of a calm um, and stress release, relief 
uh, application for my life. Sarah, what do you do to for your own practices to stay calm, mm -hmm. to try to stay free of anxiety so that we can get ourselves in alignment with this flow? Yeah, yeah. great question. And I think it, it plays right into what's going on with this virus at this time. The virus has a purpose. It has a reason for being here, just like every single one of you. The purpose of this virus is to bring balance, to bring balance to systems and the system within you. So the greatest thing that you can do uh, is to be in a state of balance within you. The virus cannot attack an environment or a system that is in perfect harmony and in balance. So the imbalances that you think you see in the world are just showing you the imbalances that are within you. And when you come into balance in your own experience, your system is your body, your thoughts, your feelings, your vibration, your environment. That is all part of your system. About a year ago, the council started talking very strongly about balance. And I didn't think it was all that exciting to talk about at the time. I'm like, hey, how about creation? How about, how about all these other things, right? Like balance, really? Okay, you know, so, <laughs> but it's true. It's true. Uh, it's looking at your life and that's part of self-love part of living your life to the fullest. And I love that you said that because as a channel, your job becomes keeping your own being in your own body in the most balanced, high vibrational state of peace, of love, of openness, of allowing. And you catch it really fast if you're out of balance. So the council gives this really good analogy about it, about riding a bike, right? Once you get good at riding a bike, then you can do some tricks. You can ride a little faster. You know, you maybe take your hands off the handlebars and ride around. You can, you can have a little more fun and you can play once you know how to balance while you're riding a bike. And the same is true here. Once you bring your system into balance, you have a lot more creativity. You have a lot more fun. There's a lot more opportunities to play and your well-being is absolutely assured. The council says from the state of consciousness of pure love, your abundance and well-being is assured. And I think those are the two things that people have the most concern about right now, their well-being and their abundance. And when you bring yourself into a state of harmony, and balance, you will see balance and harmony in the world around you. In the world around you is not turning on the television because that is not in your world, it really isn't. And, and some people would say, well, it is, I need to know what's going on and I need to know what's going on in these other places. Chances are, if you need to know something like you can't leave your house, you're gonna know, you're gonna know. So I, I encourage people to limit that as much as possible. If you want to stay tuned in, read the news instead of getting tuned in to all of the emotions of all the people that are delivering it uh, without, I don't mean any judgment by that. I, they are doing their job and, and I, I have great love for uh, everybody's experience of this. But, you know, when you turn on the news and you see something happening that's not really happening in your world, you actually feel uh, a greater sense of disharmony and, and chaos in your own being than the people that are actually in that experience. Yeah, and I love your bicycle. We're all going to be evil Knievel after yeah. this. <laughs> Knievel. But yeah. um, uh, also, I, you know, I heard something the other day. That we've got another. We've got another interview that's that's on this program, and one of the most profound things that hit me. Julius, and I know the council is always talking about, you know, our bodies, our thoughts, and emotion actualized. 
okay? So everything yeah. comes through the field yeah. of, of vibrations of thought and things like that. And this doc, we had a doctor on, and he was saying that um, when you are stressed, afraid, stressed, and full of anxiety, your brain releases a hormone called cortisol. Mm -hmm. and that cortisol is what's activating the virus into a super virus in people. Mm -hmm. If you are calm and stress-free, that virus can pass very peacefully through your system. You might process it and have a few symptoms, you know, a few mild symptoms, and it's going to come and go. For the people who have that cortisol activated in their body, that's what grows the virus. I was like, ah, I love that you just said that because I've always spoken of it in kind of an ethereal note. He's just given it hard tangibility. I mean, just think about that, okay? And he yeah. said, that's the great news is you can control whether this virus is mild, if you catch it, or whether you're going to blow it up into a super virus. Mm -hmm. And of course, they're encouraging, whether they're aware of it or not, they're throwing all this fear out at everybody around it. It's like, stop it, stop it, stop it. You know, just getting into that calm space. Anyway, I just loved that, that, that he reinforced that. I just wanted to jump off my seat and give him a hug on the camera yeah. because I'm like, that just made, I, I think, I'm hoping that made it relatable to everybody on every level, you know, of understanding, even from what we speak of. Um, yeah. That this is, that you're cr going to create your experience. You're always going to create your experience with what's going on. And I do love the balance topic, but I hear you. It's like, that's it? Like, give me something wow, you know, to throw out at people and people and you're like, balance? Like, calm, balance? Yeah. It's like, come on, yeah. guys. I know you guys are bigger than that. You know, give me something else. But uh, it's so, so appropriate for this time, right? Guess this they kind of have a little bit of that foresight for some of us on occasion. Yeah. Yeah. I, I use the word harmony just because it sounds even just a little more, you know, <laughs> a little more exciting than balance. Harmony and bringing my being into harmony. <laughs> um, I, I love what you just said because some people really do want to understand the scientific part of what's going on here. And, and really, it's not any different than the spiritual theory of, or, or truth about what's going on here. And I, I just want to say something, and I, I'm sure you can probably appreciate this. The council's teachings, Julius's teachings, not rocket science, simple, simple things that if you do them, they work and they have the ability to transform your life into the most amazing experience and the opportunity for you to live in heaven on earth, no matter what is going on around you. And what I have found is the most incredible thing that they say is the simplest thing to do which is breathe you can breathe yourself into any reality you choose a reality of peace a reality of harmony a reality of hopefulness and love and well-being you can breathe yourself into any reality you choose and one thing I've really been practicing a lot during this time is taking really deep breaths. I noticed how many times throughout the day I wasn't really breathing. And in doing the channeling work that we do, I know that's the thing that brings them in. That's the bring, thing that raises your, your vibration to elevated levels of consciousness is your breath. And breath is our life. You know, in the moment someone releases the body it's that one breath that moves us between worlds and it is the breath that will support you in breathing yourself into any state into any reality that you want to experience so if you are walking away from this conversation today remember throughout the day just take a deep breath i do it like into the count of five I hold it for five seconds and I breathe out. And I can tell you my experience just in a couple weeks of practicing that more and more and more throughout the day, I can feel my vibration rising even more. I can feel my consciousness raising even more. I feel a greater sense of peace and balance. 
but I also feel so much more connected to my higher self, the council, all of the intelligence and the love and the oneness that is available to us at all times. And I haven't seen a lot of other humans in physical form in quite a few days, but the experience I'm having with nature, with animals, is a whole different experience. You know, we just have gotten so used to the council. One of the other really important and exciting things that they've talked about is they said, we have all of us gifts and talents and abilities that we are going to remember at this time that somewhere within us, we know that we have, but for example, like telepathy or telepathic communication. And to demystify that a little bit, it's this ability to communicate with anyone anywhere fluidly. Uh, however, most of us have been focused on who's in our physical space. And that's who we communicate with. That's who we feel connected to. That's who we're having conversations with. And this time is going to open up your own channels of deeper connection with others that are always available to you, living or dead, anywhere, whether you knew them or not. And we're going to start opening up to all of the other guidance and abilities and, and talents we have. And somewhere we know we do. We just have been focused on what our physical senses perceived. And this is just a, another level of us moving into the multi-dimensional beings with multi-dimensional uh, sensory experiences that are available to us. Thank you so much for that because people are wondering, especially right now, is this an opportunity for me to activate, you know, my intuitiveness, my gifts? Um, they are feeling a pull, a pull or a push from their own selves in a direction, asking, you know, what do you think it is? What do you think it is? And, of course, I always love to say, Julius always loves to say, well, it doesn't matter what we think it is. What do you feel that it is? You know, we're not the ones that need to know we're God. You you are, you know. Yeah. And, and yeah. you know, you, you and there it is, and there it is, and there it is. The other thing I want to make, I don't know why I'm making mention of this with you, maybe just because there's a connection here, but, you know, in the downtime, too, you were talking about um, the things that we love. We're going to discover the things that we love. We're going to discover a little bit of what our priority list is, our appreciations, um, what's kind of maybe sacred to us, maybe that we'd forgotten about or that we hadn't really connected with. Like you, I have an extreme love for animals. Um, I actually have a, a, a parrot rescue here on our farm. So we have over 40 parrots here on my farm in addition to the other animals that, that are also rescue animals. And um, I get I get busy. You know, I go through my cycle and spend my time with everybody. Blah, blah, blah. And now to spend a, a little more time breathing with them, energetically connecting, you know, with them, getting a deeper understanding and communication with them. There's some new things I'm discovering about some of them because because of that time. And it doesn't have to be the animals in your life. It's you. Discover things about your own self. Pay attention. Take those breaths. Julius loves to do reverse breathing with, with the students, you know, during, uh, during workshops and stuff for all of those same reasons. It's going to get you dead centered into the now and get you able to explore farther and deeper fractals of your own self and learn to love those components of yourself. Sarah, please tell everybody how they connect with you. I know, and please correct me or add addition to this. I know you have an academy. I know you have workshops. I know you have courses and packages that you deal with because, of course, we're on some of the summits together. I, I don't know. I'm presuming that perhaps you work one-on-one -on -one and have private sessions with clients and students. Please tell everybody how to connect with you and some of the services that you offer. Thank you. Yes. Yeah, so you can go to my website, sarahlandon.com, which is S-A-R-A-L-A-N-D-O-N. -A -A and there's a lot of free resources there. There's even a tab that's called free resources. You can also find a lot of videos on YouTube, which is Sarah Landon Life, S-A-R-A 
L-A-N-D-O-N, life, L-I-F-E. Um, and we are starting a new course. I'm not sure when we're airing this, but uh, it's starting April 11th, which was designed in the last two weeks. It's called Journey of the Master, Living, Loving, and Leading in the Time of Awakening. And I'm really excited about this. We're starting it live on April 11th. It'll run for five weeks. Um, live, live channeled messages and Q&A. There's lots of different courses uh, that we have available on our website at, under courses. And then one of the things I'm most proud of is our master's class, which is our membership academy or membership program, and global community. Um, I just put so much love into that because I believe all of us who are leaders, way showers, guides during this time need that support and a place that they can come and fill up, get back to the truth, expand their awareness, expand their wisdom, practice it, come together with like-minded people. Uh, so that when you are out in the world with all these incredible people in your life that are now going through this awakening experience, you have the support that you need to navigate that with uh, greater wisdom and awareness. And then, yes, I do private sessions with people, channeled sessions, and then also uh, for people who are leaders, entrepreneurs, way showers, could be around, you know, how do you create this in all aspects of your life? your business, your vocation, your relationships? How do we really live it? And one of the things that's so important to me is uh, I have always loved this seeking of the highest wisdom. Uh, it has been a, a quest of my entire life of what is our highest potential? What are the highest truths? And I think one of the things that is most important for me is well, I think the channel wisdom and the council's wisdom is the greatest gift in my life, the most incredible experience. I'm the one who um, probably listens to it and practices it more than, than, than I could even have thought I would. Um, but a big thing that I'm really passionate about is how we integrate this in our everyday lives. Uh, that's really important. So part of the master's class is about the integration on a weekly basis. We come together to talk about how to integrate some of these higher level topics and awarenesses and, and, and teachings. So uh, go to my website. There's lots there. Uh, I really appreciate this opportunity. I just love you guys. This has been really fun. Uh, just everybody remembering that you are free to choose the life you live for you now more than ever. And it's an unprecedented time. It's, it's an incredible time to be alive. Uh, don't try to figure it all out. Just get excited about your life and allow it and let it come. And you can absolutely navigate these times with ease and grace in the most beautiful way. Well, thank you, Sarah, so much um, for all your energy and your comfort and um, your nurturing and your calm for everybody during this program. You know, everybody's feeling feeling the love, feeling the power, uh, feeling that calm and peace and harmony. That's gonna be everybody's key word for the day, is the harmony, is the harmony word. <laughs> I'm Casey Wallace, and uh, it's been a delight to be with all of you, and I know for Sarah, her heart is so big, her light is so bright. Please visit her, connect with her, and just allow some of that to, um, for you to absorb some of that incredible energy of hers. Um, looking forward to the next episode as we move forward through this time and all times of the moment of now, finding ways to expand ourselves and know ourselves as the all. COVID-19, the opportunities you didn't think of, sending all of you love and light, wellness and magnificence on your journey. Thanks everyone.